Hey everybody, this is Ross. Uh, we're gonna do a garlic harvest today. Uh, these are hard neck garlic plants that I plant every fall here in Pennsylvania. This is the variety called Music, and hard neck garlic is really special in that it produces a scape, a flower head that's really quite tasty. Uh, they're a delicacy. And probably my favorite part about growing garlic is not actually the bulb or the garlic itself, but the scape. Um, so this is kind of what happens. Now we're at the end of May, beginning of June, and this is when the plants had already formed their scapes. We harvest the scapes just by pinching them off with our thumb. There's actually one forming right here. Some of these are at different stages than others, but uh, what we then end up doing after the scape forms and we harvest it, the plant will actually sort of start to die back a bit and the lower leaves will start to brown and start to yellow and then fall off or stay on and just kind of hang around for a while and eventually it kind of goes up from the bottom and the leaves start to brown completely. Sort of like how an onion plant would work in that it would eventually topple over and the whole thing would fall, uh, would turn brownish. So. We don't necessarily want that to happen though with garlic. We actually want to harvest this garlic when there is still some green leaves left. We need about six-ish green leaves to get us good storage conditions for our garlic because each individual leaf that is green will represent a layer of the paper husk that goes around the bulb. So if we don't have enough layers, we're not gonna have as good of storage that we normally would. So I'd recommend really around that sixth leaf that you start to see that is left and that's green, I would really strongly consider harvesting at that point. I know a lot of people do it different ways, but uh, you know, Ron England and his book, How to, Great Grow, How to Grow Great Garlic, that's the uh, recommendations that that he makes and I uh, can tell you from experience I did it last year I think the year before as well but my garlic last year that I harvested the same way um, around the same time actually as last year um, it is now still in the fridge looking great I still have some bulbs from last year that I haven't finished eating and that's now over a year right so if it's been over a year you can pretty much guarantee that your garlic's being stored the right way. And that really correlates to when you harvest. So if you're not harvesting, your garlic isn't storing all that well, maybe it has something to do with your timing of your harvest. So we're gonna take my hori hori on some of these and we're gonna kinda you know dig up around the plant to plop these guys up because our, our soil in this location is a bit hard and a bit difficult. So. We're gonna get some of these guys out of the ground now, <clears throat> and then onto the curing process. So that's really important here, is actually the next step. And I've done a number of videos detailing the curing process. Um, but I'm gonna get all these guys together here in a minute. We're gonna put them in a pile and I'm gonna actually water them off, get all the dirt out of them. We're gonna clean them all up, maybe even peel off a layer or two of these brown leaves. And then they're gonna hang out in the sun on a dry day for about one or two days. And the reason I'm using the Hori Hori, by the way, it's pretty simple. We just don't wanna pull up on the stem of the garlic because if you pull up too hard, and you have really hard soil, you could break the neck of the garlic and that will damage the neck and could lead to poor storage conditions. So really a good tip here. And uh, you'll see actually, let me show you another example, or I should say a different example. This is a garlic bulb that wasn't necessarily damaged. This is. This is natural in that the bulb and the sheaths here have split in different locations. And this is just not a bulb that's gonna store well. So because this is more exposed, we don't have as many layers of this papery husk. 
we're just gonna have some issues. And what you can do is actually take off these outer layers here, which I highly recommend. And this will get us a pretty darn clean bulb of garlic, yet we still have some damage in here. I'm gonna wash off, actually I'm gonna clip off these leaves, or the, uh, the roots, I'm sorry. And that will be our garlic. We'll just let this sit. The stem will harden up. We need a dry day, as I mentioned. And then once this, uh, once this garlic sits out in the sun for about a day or two, we then bring it inside to an area that obviously is covered, right? Right. We don't want to have an area that's getting wet. We want to have low humidity, a low humidity environment because curing is just really another way of saying drying. So we're gonna pretty much dry the garlic and that's gonna do the natural process, fulfill that natural process of the garlic. Man, this is really heavy soil over here. I'm quite surprised. So it's getting, it's a little difficult to get this stuff out. But again, you know, really quickly, I'll show you here the full process. Let me get one, one of these here. This is probably one of the bigger ones I have. They really do range in size and it has a lot to do with here, guys. The size of the bulb that you took the clove from and also the size of the clove. So if you need to take the biggest cloves from the biggest bulbs, and that's really largely how you get the biggest garlic possible. And what is gonna happen here, let me just get my pruning shears, is that the garlic will actually increase in size from this point. It's not done. During the curing process, it does get bigger. But this is probably one of the bigger ones I have right now. And then we're gonna peel off, as I said, the bottom, the bottom leaf. Easier said than done. And we have ourselves a really nice, clean looking bulb. There's actually a uh, deficiency right there, unfortunately. And then I'm gonna come in here with the roots, with scissors or your pruning shears, and you can chop these off. Actually, I would take a knife Probably the best tool to use. Definitely not your pruning shears. And then this will sit out, guys. This will dry out, as I mentioned, and then that's that's it. So hopefully you guys got some lessons here. We've actually been growing garlic for a, quite some time. And uh, every year we learn some new things. Um, it seems like the bulb size varies year to year. Um, you know, it is what it is, but... Um, Overall, we always have good success growing garlic here in this climate. I highly recommend it. It's one of the best things to grow. It's one of the easier things to grow. We basically plant the, bulb, plant the clove in the fall and then come back around May, early June, and we harvest our garlic. And then after that, the curing process actually is rather simple. Everything I just showed you is rather simple. And then we store them in the fridge for the entire year and then we're done. We have garlic for the rest of the year and we don't have to buy garlic ever again, and it's actually way better than the quality you get at the store. So, um, yeah. Thank you guys here for watching this one. I hope that you guys are gonna try garlic as well. I'm gonna actually try next year to grow some onions the same way. We're gonna plant some onion seeds out uh, sometime this fall, or onion seedlings, I should say. And then uh, the following year around this time, similar to the garlic, we'll do our harvest and uh, have ourselves an earlier crop of onions. All right, guys, take care. We'll see everybody soon, all right? See you for tomorrow's video and check out our blog, figboss.com.